You're just in time because TV's most unbelievable hour begins right now. Here's Kelly Packard. Thanks, Dean. Behind me are six very brave individuals. They're going to form a human pyramid like you've never seen before. For starters, they're going to hang from the ceiling in a 3-2-1 formation. And then unbelievably, they're going to be strung together with 50 of these hooked in their backs. Now, the piercing process has already begun and we're just moments away from hoisting them off the ground. Tonight on Ripley's. This is what happens to the human body at 5G's. Now, one pilot is about to risk disaster, attempting a grueling 11G dive. Can he pull out before passing out and slamming into the ground? Strap yourself in for tonight's Ripley's Challenge. It was a day John Evans will never forget. Hit by a train and left for dead. When he awoke, doctors had put his left hand on his right arm. Let's play ball! Meet one of the world's most unbelievable baseball teams. They hit, they catch, and they throw. There's only one thing they can't do. See the ball. Plus, you won't believe the electrical appliance they found inside this pet boa. Mind-blowing pictures you can actually chew. And welcome to the world's only buffet in the buff. Only on Ripley's Believe It or Not. Welcome to Ripley's. Let's go back out to the Hollywood soundstage where Kelly is hanging for the human pyramid. Dean, what we are about to witness is so dangerous that only authorized personnel was allowed to be in here to watch this demonstration. These six human beings are going to attempt to form a hanging human pyramid. Now, these fish hooks that are in their backs are the only things that are between them and potential disaster. Okay, now, Joey, you got fish hooks in your back. How you feeling? Are you doing good? Um, I'm feeling as well I can be inspected now. I trust everybody here, so it's going to be done. Okay, so you're good to go. Who's the mastermind here? Oh, uh, that would be Alan. Alan. Okay, I'm going to talk to Alan. Alan. Yes. Can you kind of help me visualize what you're going to attempt? Sure. We've got uh, three tiers of people. Top tier has three people. Middle tier has two, and then the bottom has one. We're going to lift this up in progression. The first tier is going to go up. Second tier is going to go up, and the last person is going to go up. Wow, that's incredible. Now, how is this different from other suspensions that you've done before? This kind of engineering nightmare. This is probably the first time this has been done. I'm I'm in awe that you're talking to me so calmly with these hooks in your back. <laughs> Will somebody please, please talk me through how you push through this pain threshold? Because I can't, I can't fathom it. I really can't. Joey's a good man. Joey. <laughs> Joey. <laughs> how do you push through the pain threshold? Um, ones like this, it would be people pushing me. The adrenaline, the endorphins, and people going, come on, you wussy. <laughs> Okay, well listen, you guys are all going to be hanging from each other, right? And these hooks, you know, if one should break, it's going to cause a ripple effect. And if one goes down, you all go down. This is pretty serious. Why would you guys risk your life like this? This is just a test. You know, it's like I don't think I can do it, and I'm going to do my best to push through and do it. That's all it is for me. Wow, test of the will. Okay, well, should something go wrong, there's a paramedic crew standing close by. They've been here all day. They were here for the piercing process. You know, in fact, why don't we take a look at what was involved in the process for this demonstration? Crews started working before dawn to set up and rig the suspension apparatus, a process that would take nine hours. This experienced team of suspension experts has dreamed of attempting this inverted pyramid formation, something that no one else has tried before. These two-ton motors and thousands of pounds of chain will hoist them 40 feet into the air. Unbelievably, the hooks supporting those below will go directly into the team members hanging above, tugging their backs in opposite directions. There will be nothing but the skin of their back keeping them in the air. Crash test dummies were used to balance the weight of the bar. Meanwhile, the suspension team was already undergoing the painful piercing process. Right? Yeah. After all the hooks are in place, nylon rope is threaded through the eye of each hook and then connected to the steel beam as the six prepare to make history. Are you guys ready? Oh, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. I'm ready. You ready? Let's do this. Okay. 
three, two, one. Let's lift him up. Oh, boy. We've got three of you guys off the ground, and there's still three more to go. How are you feeling so far, Joey? I'm feeling fine. Uh, it's when we start adding these Here's guys below us. Right, right. Okay, okay. Oh, my goodness. There's two more off the ground. We have five off the ground. That just added another 450 pounds of force pulling at the skin of these guys' backs. Uh, don't breathing. stop breathing. Keep your eyes open, okay? Take deep breaths. Breathe. Why did we stop? You're okay. Oh my gosh, he passed out. Okay. Hold on. Sean, let's come back. Let's try to raise his legs up. Okay. Here. Sean, pick up his leg. Come on back to me. Pick up his leg. Okay, now what's just happened? He just passed out. Are you okay? Yeah. Are you okay? You're yeah. back? You, you're with us? Yeah. Okay. All right. Does this happen often? With him? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Everybody ready to continue? Okay, let's go. What's going through your head right now? Ow! You know you're about to go up. Are you nervous? As long as I remember to breathe, it's all good. Yeah. Oh, that was... Wow. I didn't feel that. Everybody's up in the air now. You're looking at a total of 920 pounds being supported by just human flesh. person inverted human pyramid and you saw it only on Ripley. Now, I've been playing baseball my whole life, but I've never tried it blindfolded with a softball that beeps. I imagine it's got to be pretty tough but the guys on this next ball team don't really have a choice. Imagine trying to hit a baseball blindfolded. Complete darkness, not being able to see the ball coming at you. It's almost impossible, but for Ben Shu and his teammates, this is just an average game. Because believe it or not, the players on Ben's team are blind, and they play with a ball that beeps. Ben was born in 1984 with a debilitating eye condition. A condition that would leave most people sidelined for life, but not Ben. I'm the type of person who thinks that I can do anything. <laughs> At the age of 14, Ben was the youngest player to join the Cleveland Scrappers, a team belonging to the National Beep Baseball Association, or the NBBA. This unique league consists of 24 teams made up of visually impaired players where only the pitcher and the catcher can see. And unlike regular baseball, the pitcher, the catcher, and the batter are on the same team. The pitcher's job is to help the batter get a hit. Batter's out! In the NBBA, standard equipment includes knee pads and blindfolds. These masks ensure that players who may still have some small amount of vision don't have an unfair advantage over those who are totally blind. And since the athletes can't see the ball, they use a special one that they can actually hear. The players must listen carefully for both the ball and the directions from the pitcher and catcher. Ready, hit. These vertical bases actually buzz to help players run in the right direction. And unlike regular baseball, there are only two bases. Once a ball is hit, the player runs toward whichever base is buzzing. Get there before the ball is fielded, and a run is scored. To demonstrate just how hard it is to hit a ball without seeing it, Ripley's put some sighted players to the test. Ball, you're out. Ball. I can't imagine how uh, those players can do that, like day in, day out. Let's play ball! Yes, come on, come on, let's go! Bring it home! Today, Ben's team, the Scrappers, and the Chicago Five Star Comets are competing for a spot in the finals. And their six inning games are filled with hard hitting, fast running, and aggressive fielding. It's in the air. Head. It landed on heads. The scrappers are first to bat, and Ben can't wait to step up to the plate. Here comes the pitch. Here we go. Ready, set. 
Ben smacks one out into center field, just over the 40-foot arch. Taking off down the baseline, the Scrappers score a quick first inning run. But the Comets fire right back, racking up one run after another. Struggling to rally, a few solid hits from the Scrappers puts Cleveland back into contention. But then a series of hits by the Comets in the fourth inning seals the deal. With a score of 7-4, to four, the Comets win, scrapping any chance Ben and the Scrappers may have had to compete in the World Series Finals. Still, despite all the bumps and bruises, for Ben and his teammates, triumphing over adversity and being a part of the great American pastime is what matters most. The rush I get from scoring runs, I'll be on the field, it's pretty big excitement too. Good yeah. game, guys. Hey, Joe, you should No, all your life is being visually impaired. You hear people say what you cannot do. This shows you that you can play ball, that you can do what you got to do. And nothing's going to stop you but yourself. Bring it home! Don't go away. There's more right after this. Imagine waking up to discover your left hand surgically attached to your right arm. We'll show you why what sounds like a nightmare is actually a real-life miracle for one courageous man. Plus, hundreds of barbers working 24 hours a day. You won't believe why thousands of people are lining up outside the scalp shaving salon. Also, how one man is transforming candy into edible art. Gumballs, gumballs. And giving your dog a simple bath can turn into a disaster. Now, one animal lover's invented a machine to get your pet squeaky clean. Ridley's puts the dogomat to the test. No way! <laughs> Coming up. Stories you can't imagine, people you won't believe. Ripley's Believe It or Not. Every day, thousands stand in line for a chance at the hottest ticket in town. But it's not the latest blockbuster movie or amusement park thrill ride they're waiting for. Believe it or not, they're here to have their heads shaved. <laughs> Here in Tirumala, India, Hindi believers demonstrate their humility and devotion by making an offering of hair. Incredibly, 12,000 heads are shaved every day. That means the city is constantly full of hairless worshipers. One local man has even trained his elephant to bestow blessings on the freshly shaven. Often waiting for 10 hours or more, worshippers finally enter the shaving area. Using straight-edged razors, the temple's 1,600 barbers are so efficient, they average over 15 heads an hour. The temple then sells the mounds of freshly shorn hair to local wig makers. The money is used to help the area's poor and ensure the amazing Hair Temple of India keeps going at a steady clip. Believe it. The artwork that hangs in a Ripley's Museum is usually not there because of who created it, but rather how it was created. In this next story, gumballs are the medium. Franz Spohn is obsessed with gumballs, but he never chews them. As far as I know, my work with gumballs is unique, uh, not only in this world, but uh, the universe. Because believe it or not, Franz turns gumballs into incredible one-of-a-kind masterpieces. As a youngster, Franz was known for his wild imagination. But in 1975, Franz took his creativity to a whole new level, transforming a piece of gummy candy into a Scottish Terrier. If I had purchased some candy I didn't think tasted very good and I hated to waste it. From there, Franz began working with all kinds of candy, 
From squishing Swedish fish to experimenting with cupcake sprinkles. Ultimately, it was his love of bright colors that led him to gumballs. They're round and they're, they're shiny and uh, you know, I kind of look at them and think, oh, gumballs, gumballs, you know, nice colors and everything. Now, when Franz is not busy teaching at Edinburgh University, he can be found at home working on his edible art. That's totally irresistible. To begin, Franz must come up with an image and scan it into his computer. After figuring out the basic design and color combination, he gets to work. Then, Franz selects standard size gumballs and rolls them down the specially designed plastic tubes. It is a labor intensive and time consuming process. Franz must pay careful attention to detail because the wrong color gumballs in the wrong spots can change the entire look of a mural. Each line of pricks, pricks now, here. in this Ripley's exclusive, Franz is going to create a unique gumball mural before your eyes. Soliciting help from two students, one by one, gumballs are dropped down the long, narrow plastic tubes. It takes 130 gumballs to fill up each six-foot tube, and a small screw is used to lock the gum in place. After all 80 tubes are done, Franz begins assembling the mural. Amazingly, he's done it. Franz Spohn has built the world's first Dean Cain gumball mural. Strangely, despite the fact that all of the gumballs in his murals are edible, Franz is never tempted to chew the gum. Ironically, um, I have type 2 diabetes, so I have to stay away. Believe it. There are 10,400 gumballs in this particular portrait. <laughs> I, just, I, can't, I just can't look at that thing. Enter Robert Ripley's archives. Robert Ripley, leave it or not. <laughs> leave it or not. The year is 1946. Hotel fires sweep through the city of Atlanta, killing more than 100 people. To evacuate occupants from these tall buildings quicker, inventors come up with the portable fire escape. Demonstrating this new prototype, a volunteer wraps the safety strap tightly around his waist. He then pushes the drum of steel tape out the window. Finally, climbing onto the ledge, he begins to make his way down the 12-story building. Amazingly, the portable fire escape is equipped with brakes similar to those in an automobile, controlling the speed of descent. This 65-year-old man makes his way to safety in 18 seconds, and the portable fire escape is easily reset to rescue the next person. Despite its success, new fire codes requiring permanent fire escapes in all public buildings render this ambitious invention obsolete. Leave it or not. Ripley's world of unbelievable animals. The Probst family of Klamath Falls, Oregon, had always loved their pet boa constrictor, Teardrop. But nothing could have prepared them for what they were about to discover one winter morning. Believe it or not, their baby boa had swallowed an entire electric heating pad. The power cord like a rat's tail still hanging from its mouth. It was plugged in and it was on high. I mean, it was cooking. Whether watching TV or hanging out with the family, Teardrop was like one of the kids. But when her owners noticed she wasn't acting like her usual slinky self, they decided to investigate. A closer inspection revealed a shocking situation. Teardrop was immediately rushed to the vet. An X-ray confirmed the worst. Teardrop had instinctively mistaken the warmth of a heating pad as prey. Okay. And overnight, actually devoured the entire unit, controller and dial. In my practice, we see a number of species. Uh, occasionally, we'll see a snake, but 
Uh, I've never seen a snake with a problem like this before. Doctors had no choice but to operate immediately. I consulted with a colleague, and we were able to identify where to make the incision. And after we knew where to cut, we were able to get inside and get it out. Amazingly, after two hours in surgery and several months of recuperating, Teardrop is as good as new. And while it's safe to say that baby Boa won't be allowed near any more heating pads, her owners are just glad she's OK. She's real special. Uh, I'd have to say that Teardrop's more of my best friend. Every day for years, John Evans would take a stroll along the railroad tracks in his neighborhood for a little time to himself. But that all changed the day he got his foot stuck in the tracks and saw a train coming right at him. What happened next, you will have to see to believe. This story contains some graphic images, so be prepared. For Decatur, Illinois resident John Evans, it began like any other day with a routine walk through town and across this railroad intersection. But this is one walk John will never forget because somehow he slipped and his foot got caught in the track. And believe it or not, a speeding train was headed his way. And the last thing I remember is kabam. That's when the lights went off. When John woke up, he was in the hospital. Looking down at his broken body, he couldn't believe his eyes. It looked weird. I didn't know what was wrong. Incredibly, though bruised, John's legs were fine. But the accident had mangled his left arm and right hand so badly, doctors were forced to amputate. However, his left hand, which was on the amputated arm, was in very good shape. Surgeons believed that he was the perfect candidate for a rare procedure that might save the use of his one good hand. But to do it, they would need to attach his left hand to his right arm. Complete hand transfer, we believe, in the world has only been done four times. But simply attaching the hand was only the first step. John still had to undergo a complicated 12-hour surgery to reconnect tendons as well as nerves. The tendon that normally now would move the, the thumb or had been moving the thumb is now on the wrong side. And we have to match those up so that when his brain would say for his thumb to move, his thumb would move and not his little finger. Hi, Don. Once the procedure was complete, John spent the next three months trying to control his backward-facing, upside-down hand. The hardest part was grabbing a hold of things. And uh, I just couldn't grab a hold of anything, whether it be a piece of paper or whether it be to take my medicine. Through rehabilitation and practice, John began mastering the skills he needed to live life on his own again. And despite the incredible hardship, he never gave up. He went through it with probably one of the best attitudes I've seen uh, with somebody having on, undergone such a um, severe trauma. With John's unique situation, even simple tasks can turn complicated. But he's invented a few gadgets to help him through everything from putting on a watch to buttoning a shirt. Because while the train accident slowed him down, John is more determined than ever to live his life to the fullest. I just have more of appreciation for it now. John Evans is truly a medical miracle. Pilot Greg Poe is about to climb into the cockpit, and he doesn't know if he's coming back alive. We're going to pull 11 Gs on this, and at 11 Gs, I could pass out. If that happens, it's fatal. Tonight's Ridley's challenge is next. Plus, can this man's invention put an end to dirty dogs? Ripley's travels to Miami Beach to reveal how this contraption will even clean your cat. And the gourmet chef who caters to the rich and famous, but his food isn't served by a waitress, it's served on a waitress. 
The most unbelievable show on television will be right back. The G in G-Force stands for gravity. The human body can handle about four to seven Gs before blood flow stops and causes a blackout. Well, Ripley's found a pilot who wants to test that theory while he's at the controls of his own plane. Take a look. In just moments, world famous stunt pilot Greg Poe will take his life into his own hands. Because in this Ripley's challenge, Greg will put his high performance aircraft into a screaming nosedive. Then, as his body is battered at record breaking forces of 11 G's or more, he'll attempt to pull out before he and his plane are smashed to bits. We're gonna pull back on the stick harder than I've ever pulled back before, literally take it right up to 11 G's, so the airplane's going straight up in the air. Greg knew early on that he was destined to fly, and at the age of 19, he was already a licensed and experienced pilot. It wasn't long before Greg was thrilling crowds at air shows around the world with the precision of his acrobatic aeronautics. Today, Greg will fight the deadly effects of gravity as he attempts to reverse the direction of his aircraft while it plunges at over 275 miles per hour. An act that will apply almost unbearable pressure on Greg's body. Well, pilots have been known to black out at six Gs before. Uh, military fighter airplanes are limited to nine Gs. We're gonna pull 11 Gs on this. And at 11 Gs, I could pass out and it'll take at least 20 seconds to recover from that. And if that happens, it's fatal. One G corresponds to the normal pull of the Earth's gravity on the human body. The number of Gs Greg hopes to endure will cause his body to become 11 times heavier. That's enough force to prevent oxygen flow to the brain, meaning blackout or even brain damage is possible. Back on the field and only moments before takeoff, Greg visualizes every aspect of today's flight. He knows any mistake at these speeds will surely prove fatal. Making his last few adjustments, Greg starts his engine. Just moments later, he's airborne. This is it. He moves into position and puts the plane into a nose dive. Accelerating towards Earth at over 275 miles an hour, Greg reaches top speed. He has only seconds to react. Fighting gravity, he manages to pull back on the stick and hold on. Both Greg and his aircraft are still intact. But as the onboard G-Force meter reads, the effort only pulled 10 G. Though a little bit lightheaded, Greg is ready to try it again. And I know I'm pulling harder. I'll give it one more try. He moves back into position for his final run on the record books. Okay, here we go. Beginning his second dive, Greg easily passes the 200 mile an hour mark. Then, pulling back on his stick, the effect is immediate. Unbelievably, watching frame by frame, the meter reads an incredible 11.4 Gs. All the air is forced out of Greg's lungs. Right now, his body weighs over one and a half tons. His head alone is a staggering 110 pounds. All the blood in his body is rushing to his feet. In fact, Greg's heart has stopped and the pressure build is enormous. He is colorblind and experiencing increasing tunnel vision. The plane itself weighs in at an astonishing 12,650 pounds. If Greg doesn't maintain perfect control of his plane, it will soon begin to tear apart. But as Greg pulls back on the stick, he pulls up and away. He's done it. Surviving one pressure cooker of a ride, 
Greg Poe pulls out of a nosedive at 11.4 Gs. Tower shelf pop is ready to land. And safely touches down, setting a new Ripley's record for human endurance. It's a lot of work, but I love it. It's the only sushi bar in America where everything is served raw, including the servers. Wait till you hear what diners think about these people platters. And is the world's smallest computer chip the size of a stamp, a grain of sand, or too small to see with the naked eye? We'll compute the answer right after this. Stories you can't imagine, people you won't believe, Ripley's Believe It or Not. 36 ordinary Americans are about to have their dreams come true. Because for about 5,000 bucks, they're all about to get blasted into space. And believe it or not, these citizens are going for the ride of their lives in death. The Celestis Company has been offering space burials once a year since 1997. The process begins months before liftoff. Cremated ashes are placed in a flight capsule, and 36 of those capsules are fit into the rocket's space module. Upon reaching space, the module is released. Today, friends and families from all over the world have gathered to give their loved ones a one-of-a-kind final farewell. For the families waiting on the ground, it's time filled with mixed emotions. My dad's going to uh, take the ride of his life, and I, I think, to a certain extent, I'm a little jealous, but I'll get my chance. The countdown begins. Five, four, four three, three, two, ignition. Liftoff of the Taurus 6, 44 per count mission. As the rocket blasts into space and reaches the Earth's upper atmosphere, grieving relatives watch as their friends or family members hitch a ride to the stars. It's obviously a pretty emotional experience. Um, it happened less than 10 minutes ago, and already she's over Lima, Peru. <laughs> and after experiencing burial in space from the ground, Many of these spectators have decided to join their loved ones and take that final rocket ride to eternity themselves. If the, our last ride is like this one, I mean, why not? It would be great. The first computer went online in 1946. It had 18,000 vacuum tubes, weighed 30 tons, and took up 1,800 square feet of office space, an area of 30 feet by 60 feet. That's like this big. Today, the world's smallest computer chip is the size of a grain of this sand. It's almost too small for you to even see. It has more memory than its predecessor, and that very first computer cost $486,000. Today's microchip costs 20 cents. We've come a long way. By day, Chris Leahy is a chef at a trendy New York restaurant. But by night, this young cook prepares an entirely different dining experience. Believe it or not, he serves the food on live, naked models. Chris and his business partner, Andrew Hagney, call it raw catering, serving sushi on a human platter. People like it because when they come to eat, they are experiencing much more than just a regular buffet. They're experiencing a whole art form of food. Always looking for ways to bring in new customers, the two came up with an entirely new approach to food presentation. But getting the food to stick to the skin wasn't easy. 
It actually took a lot of trial and error. My neighbor came in one day, and we were just sitting there with fruits, cheese, and chocolates, just sitting on our arms watching the football game on a Sunday evening. Tonight, this dining duo will actually unveil a culinary masterpiece at BQE in Brooklyn. And this one-of-a-kind feast requires more preparation than simply ordering off the menu. Hello there, nice table ring. First, the models are wiped down with antibacterial cloths. Understandably, it takes the girls a moment to get used to the idea of appearing completely naked in the presentation. I'm doing this because it's artistic. It's, it's, you know, tastefully done, and I'm enjoying myself. Chris begins the decoration process by carefully arranging 14 different delicacies on and around his live human serving trays. Tuna roll snake from ankle to neck and crawfish crepes are strategically nestled alongside duck meat clusters. It's um, a performance art piece with food, and uh, we hope that you like it, everything that we have here. But before anyone eats, one thing is made very clear. The models are not on the menu. We've never had a problem with anybody disrespecting the models, and if anything should occur, the party would be over and done. And while shy at first, these diners quickly get into the spirit and dig in. I've never done it before, but I like, totally now. I'll try anything once. After the main course, it's time for something sweet. With rose petals adorning the models, Chris gently lays out the desserts, fruit pastries, banana citrus cakes, and handmade chocolates. It's a combination of art and food, which makes the experience all the more enriching. Believe it. This guy claims to have the perfect dog washing device. And just to show how safe it is, he's even about to test it on himself. And the origins of this artifact had experts butting heads for years. Only Ripley's reveals the truth behind this spine-chilling natural disaster when Dean ventures into the Ripley's vault next. You're watching Ripley's Believe It or Not. Most pet owners dread bath time for their dog or cat. But now, believe it or not, your pet can go from this to this, all with just the push of a button. Normally, some of them stand, some of them sit, some of them lay down, you see, depending on the cycle. It's called the Lava Con, and its developer believes this plexiglass-enclosed pet washing machine is the future of hands-free pet hygiene. Never saw anything like that in my life. <laughs> Spanish-born inventor Andres Diaz came up with his inventive pet cleaner from multi-head showers found in health clubs. Uh, we said, how could it be one for the pets? And how that's how the idea started. Andres began working on a prototype, but there were problems to work out from the very beginning. First, he needed to make sure the water pressure, temperature, and the non-toxic soap he was using would be safe for cherished pets. So before attempting to wash any animals, Andres tried out his new contraption on himself. It feels pretty good. It's very refreshing. It's like a jacuzzi when, you know, like a plant. When you're in a jacuzzi, you calm down. But does this revolutionary time saver really work? Ripley's headed to Miami's South Beach to give some complimentary baths and see if this pedomat lives up to the hype. No, you're not. What is it? You're gonna put dogs in there? You wash dogs? <laughs> no way! <laughs> oh God. We'll stay around and see this. Man. First, the pet is placed into the machine. Then, Andres sets the controls to correspond to the size of the animal. A push of the button starts the pre wash. Then comes the suds. A quick but thorough rinse cycle. 
And finally, it's time for the dryers to kick in. The whole process takes about 20 easy minutes, and the result speaks for itself. He, his hair is shiny. Um, he doesn't smell as bad. He's very dry. And while the pet washing machine is definitely easy to use, this kind of convenience will set you back about $20,000. So far, interested clients have included professional groomers and veterinarians. But single pet owners have something to look forward to. Andres is also working on a smaller model for home use. It's going to be a much simpler, affordable unit, but that could probably take us another year, year and a half to be marketing it. Down here in the vault, some of the most common appearing artifacts have the most unbelievable stories. Yes, this is a tree trunk, but look closer. It has not been altered or carved in any way since it was discovered in the 1930s by a zoologist named Eugenia Shorrock. What looks like the horns of a ram are in fact just that. It was a mystery that stumped experts for years until a park ranger observed big horn sheep during their mating rituals. Males bang heads for domination, and the sound can be heard for up to a mile away. Well, apparently one unfortunate animal rammed this tree, got stuck, died, and the 100-year-old tree continued to grow around the skull and horns. Unbelievable? Believe it. It's a special double helping from the twisted mind of Jack Ketchum. First at 7, meet your new neighbors in Offspring. I said what? Then at 9, hope you're hungry for more. It's the chiller premiere of The Woman. This is our project. Do we really get to keep it? Yeah. Tomorrow, starting at 7, only on Chiller. Scary good. Have you ever known me to let things get out of hand? with the guts. All right, let's do this. Win the glory. Fear Factor. Back-to-back -back episodes. Sunday starting at 7. Only on Schiller. Scary Good.